The blockchain trilemma is one of the biggest things in the crypto industry that every single token, every single L1 is trying to crack the code to. I think every project and every person knows that if, if a company, if an L1, if a blockchain solves this blockchain trilemma problem, they will instantly get like the most market share. They will be the most usable chain. They will have the best metrics. They will have the most respect. And that means they will have the most price appreciation, the most money, the most everything. And so this holy grail sort of trilemma that is being solved in the crypto industry is the gold standard of what every blockchain is trying to solve. Now, this idea of the blockchain trilemma trilemma was coined back a couple years ago by Vitalik Buterin of Ethereum saying that there are three things that every blockchain needs to try and solve and the one that solves all three of them at the same time will be arguably the world-class blockchain that everyone should use. These three things that Vitalik said that need to be solved are decentralization, so who is in control of your blockchain and how is it distributed across a network of people so that, you know, one person can't change all the data. One person can't be in control. One person can't hack it, right? The second thing is scalability. How can we have the masses onboarded? How can millions and billions of people use it to a high effective degree and still have a great user experience as we push all that data through? And then thirdly, security. How can we protect all of this on-chain data? How can we protect users? How can we, can, can we protect the blockchain itself so that other people are not taking it over and changing it and hacking it and then making it more centralized and making it less uh, scalable, less a, less of a good user experience. So how can we achieve all these things? This is seen as one of the hardest things to do in crypto, and it's what every project is either actively or subconsciously trying to solve. We have big players like Ethereum trying to solve the blockchain trilemma via you know moving to proof of stake and trying to be more decentralized and scaling via L2 in order to have more throughput to the base layer, right? We have things like Solana, which are prioritizing speed over security, over decentralization, and they are slowly moving to more decentralized systems as you know tokens get distributed or nodes become more available and more people can use the node technology to run and validate transactions. And we also have things like Cash which are using a block DAG structure to try and scale securely at the same time. They haven't introduced smart contracts, but they'll be trying to do that through a Rust protocol SDK on their, on their platform. So all these different blockchains are using different methods, different block production techniques, and different scaling techniques to achieve this blockchain trilemma. In this video though, I wanna tell you why Cardano has been doing some of the best work, in my opinion, in this space, and why I think Cardano is solving the blockchain trilemma without actively like putting it into their marketing without without actively thinking about it and subconsciously doing these things one by one that take time to do and in the end 2025 2026 will be really on the path to solving these three things in the trilemma so the first piece of the trilemma is definitely decentralization cardano was incepted to solve decentralization from the first block it wanted to have this idea of stake pool operators and have delegation and really uh, pioneer this new version of proof of stake that we've seen a lot of chains adopt. So the reason that Cardano is so decentralized, especially after the Chang hard fork, is the seven genesis keys of Cardano are burned. Every action that happens goes to a vote from this point on, and then when we vote on it, stake pool operators have to accept the transaction or accept the hard fork or accept the parameter change and then all those ADA delegators have the ability to both vote with a delegated representative on a change and then vote with their ADA to a stake pool to say okay we're going to support this stake pool that helps push the blockchain forward. So in Cardano we have multiple layers of decentralization of what is happening, what gets voted to happen, what changes are made to the blockchain or how we're using money and then we also have a second layer of decentralization in who is pushing the blockchain forward? So when we do a hard fork like the Chang hard fork or the Alonzo hard fork, the parameter changes were pushed by the big entities via their seven genesis keys, which no longer exist. In the future, when we do a, a massive hard fork, it will go to a treasury, it will go to a, a constitutional vote, all of ADA holders will vote, and then it will be pushed to the blockchain. Now, when these changes are pushed to the blockchain, the stake pool operators have the ability to accept the change or reject the change. And when that happens, everyone who's delegated to a stake pool is effectively supporting or disagreeing with what a stake pool operator does. So in this decentralized model, we have 
distributed distributed nodes all over the world, over 3,000 nodes on Cardano, and you get to use your ADA to vote what is happening and how it's happening and who you support. This is how Cardano maintains decentralization. Right now, Cardano is actively the most decentralized blockchain in the major crypto universe of the massive tracked L1 projects. Cardano is the most decentralized. It has a Nakamoto coefficient of over 58, and by all metrics, it's doing some of the best work in decentralization. So that part of the trilemma is easy. That is focused, that is done. The next thing is security. Cardano does security very well and has not currently had a hack on the mainnet L1 because of how it uses Haskell. Cardano has a code base called Plutus, which is Cardano's version of Haskell. And what Haskell lets Cardano do is write better code and verify bugs are not within the code much easier. So it allows code to be more transparent, more smooth, and easier digestible to be more secure from the beginning. Second, all transactions on Cardano require a signature. This is not true on a lot of other chains, but on Cardano, when you do a transaction or when somebody tries to do a transaction out of your wallet without your permission, they will still be prompted with a, uh, a sign transaction data, which means you need to put your password in, you need to put your wallet password in and sign that data. So if a hacker does not know your signed data, your, your password for your wallet, then they won't be able to sign the transaction and steal your funds or do this or liquidate your loan or whatever, right? Lastly, the big thing Cardano does for security is it splits transaction data via the Ouroboros proof of stake model. So when a transaction goes through, that data is actually split into two pieces. And so it makes it just harder to maliciously attack with intent. So Cardano is doing really well in security and it's doing really well in decentralization. And we talked about how every blockchain has this kind of one piece that they're missing because they do well in other spaces. Well, the one piece Cardano missing is its scalability. If you've been in Cardano or are in Cardano and recently just witnessed the SNEC fun pump fund version on Cardano happen, you've seen the blockchain bloat get overloaded a little bit. You've seen scalability kind of be an issue in Cardano. But there are two things Cardano has done over the past two years in 2022, 2023, and then 2023, 2024 to increase its scalability in order to prepare for what's coming in 2025 through 2026. So the first thing that Cardano did is it increased its pipelining for transactions. And basically what this means is it streamlined transactions and how they flow through the blockchain and what kind of path and network and pipes between the blocks and between the transactions are happening. It streamlined this process, made it more efficient, made it better, made it smarter so that when we do some of the next upgrades, the pipelining in the blockchain is already routing transactions the best way. It's already making transaction speed and tra transaction finality much better. This is one of the first things that had to happen in order to prepare for stuff like Hydra, like input endorsers and other scalable metrics. The second thing that happened in 2023, 2024 that just kind of got completed and is usable now is Hydra and it's Hydra heads. Basically, we've all seen the things that Cardano can get to like a million transactions per second via Hydra. What Hydra is though, is it's not a, it's not like an L2 scaling solution. It is a state channel type scenario where you can open this channel, run a, run a million transactions through it very quickly, very seamlessly, and then close the channel. It's very good for things like video games, poker tournaments, um, closed loop betting systems, or, you know, like some type of service where you know the input, you know the output, you know how long it's going to take, you know what needs to be controlled and what doesn't need to be controlled. And it's not an open-ended thing. It's like you open a party, you open a land party, stuff's going to go on there, and then you close the party and the Hydra head is closed. Hydra is very good at scaling these types of things. It's currently being used to run Doom on Cardano and other video games on Cardano, but it's not an ultimate scaling solution for every transaction scenario on the Cardano blockchain. And it's not a scenario to scale the actual blocks of Cardano, which at the base layer is what's going to cause congestion via how many blocks you can process and what you can process in those blocks. Another big thing Cardano does is because it's not an accounts-based model, because it's a UTXO-based model, is it can bundle transactions very well and submit all those transactions down to the base layer at one time. In one transaction, it can have a lot of other simple transactions. So that's another way Cardano is scaling. But the biggest way Cardano is going to scale, the biggest idea that's ever been presented in the Cardano history is what is hopefully coming in 2025 and 2026 with input endorsers. Earlier in this video, we talked about Caspa, how it uses a block DAG style structure to effectively 
run countless blocks or transact a block on chain like every second or so. Cardano has its own version of this by introducing input endorsers, which basically allows Cardano to build the next couple blocks while the current block is being processed. So right now on Cardano, every 20 seconds, a block is pushed to the L1. It's verified, it's validated, and all the transactions in that block in that block go through. Every 20 seconds, we get one of these blocks. What input endorsers is trying to do is say that, okay, in between the 20 seconds, the 19 seconds that we have, the nodes of Cardano, the, the computers running Cardano are not doing anything. They're not bundling transactions, they're not batching things, they're not doing anything. They only work for the one second every 20 seconds. And so what Input Endorsers is saying is that let's start to build the transactions, let's start to build the blocks in the 19 seconds in the time between blocks so that every time we are pushing a block, we can push actively more blocks a second. We can push more transactions a second. We can push more information every second and we can bundle all those blocks into one massive block every 20 seconds. That's Cardano's version of scaling that is going to be coming 2025, 2026. Now, why am I telling you this? Why do I think Cardano is solving the blockchain trilemma? I think it's solving the blockchain trilemma because it's done the two hardest ones first. I think in my opinion, decentralization is something you have to get done done from the beginning correctly. If you don't start decentralized, it's very hard to move decentralized. So Cardano has done very well at being decentralized and maintaining decentralization and getting more decentralized over the years. Also, it's been very secure. The, the code base is not instantly going to become unsecure. Once you maintain security and you build security into the infrastructure, everything else is more secure. Everything from your NFT projects, your dApps, all these things have a more secure code base to reside on. While Cardano is not the fastest blockchain at pushing transactions through, it's not the most scalable yet, I think scalability has been baked into the roadmap the whole time, and scalability is one of the things that can be added later. We've seen Ethereum do this. Ethereum was not super scalable at the beginning, but later on it added scalability via L2 scaling solutions. You can always add more scalability. It's much harder to add more decentralization, right? And so I'm, I like the way that Cardano's gone about this, decentralized, security first, and we are coming into more scalable seasons. We've added pipelining, we've added hydro, we've added transaction bundling via UTXO. The next thing that's coming is input endorsers. And after that, I think Cardano will have very little reasons to not be considered a blockchain actively solving and completing the blockchain trilemma. Everyone has given reasons why they don't like Cardano. At the beginning it was, it has no smart contracts. Okay, Cardano, Cardano added smart contracts. Then it was, Cardano has the seven Genesis keys. It can't be decentralized. Now they burn the Genesis keys, so now it's obviously decentralized. The next thing people are going to say is that Cardano is not scalable. It doesn't scale very well. It has slow transactions. Okay, it's going to catch up with Solana and, and Algorand and AVAX by using input endorsers, by using Hydra, by using transaction bundling and transaction pipelining. And so that's one of the biggest things I'm excited for now that we've completed the Chang fork, is for Cardano to get on its scalable horse and to start solving these things so that it can solve the blockchain trilemma and be one of the best blockchains actively solving that mission, all right? If you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you agree Cardano is solving the blockchain trilemma. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one.